Day 47, square body wire. Bullshit. We pretty much got all the components in, old steering column, just to have something to wire to. Engine, transmission, battery, all that stuff is in. Fuel tank, fuel pump, that's in. So went around, got all the components in first and started putting wiring in from the component to behind the glove box where everything kind of comes together and then to the battery from there. That's where I'm at now. I've got most everything terminated, connectors on. There, there's a couple more left to do, but that's gonna be another day. But pretty much everything's in place. Gotta finish hooking up the battery and we should be ready to top the fluids off if uh, we get power to everything. And So let's take a look around and I'll show you some of the things I've done. Not really enough room anymore for the battery under the hood. And to keep things clean, I think I'm gonna put it somewhere else. I'm gonna go down here on the frame to where she's going. Let's do some measuring. I ended up reusing the bracket that I took off the bottom of the battery tray. It helped give the battery tray some strength where it was bolted to the frame. right here have to make a couple modifications drill us a little hole for the plug and the wire and then it hits on this piece of metal back here but i think i can bend that up out of the way see if we can do that gotta wire the alternator this wire has a resistor in it i believe that's going to go to 12 volts switched the stud down here will go to the battery the switched wire will tell it when to start charging which is when the key is on we've got to wire in our fans there's a wiring kit for each fan I have to break that out and kind of decipher where I'm going to put it. It's a binary switch for the AC. We've got to bring the wire around to that. We just got to make sense out of all this. Something's going to the battery, something's going to fans, something's going to the AC. Just got to sort it all out. Got a fish tape here. I'm gonna use this to run up, hopefully around, and come out on the inside of the fender. That's how I'm gonna run most of the wires to the front. Probably gonna put some kind of wire loom on the rest of it to keep it from getting chafed or anything. So those wires will be going to the binary switch for the AC and the electric fans. So the wires should be behind the fender, and then they'll come out down there. tape the wires to the other end of this fish tape and pull them through. So inside this fender where I cannot fasten it and secure it, keep it from moving around, I want to really protect it good from chafing and everything. So that's why I'm going to put this wire loom around it, give me a little insurance against a short somewhere. run to the binary switch add that back through eventually comes out over there still got to tie it down a little bit all right let's see what we can get into next
We've got run wires to the sending unit and the fuel pump on the other side. Once I do that, I can put the gas tank in. This is gonna go from the alternator post to the battery. Gotta run that one. Still got some of these to sort out. I've got everything kind of located in here. We've still gotta hook some things together, add a couple more relays. Underneath here I've got, all these wires are going to the battery. Actually gonna put a fuse block, a waterproof fuse block right here. Got the main ground run. Got this cable that'll go to the starter. All right, time to go to the hardware store for the unthink time. I'm trying to use this type of clamp to secure everything, especially if it's seen. Try to always use a lock nut so that it's not going to vibrate loose or anything. But I'll try to use these as much as possible. I'll use a zip tie here and there, uh, but only where it's not seen. So, yeah. So, let's see if we can get this stuff buckled down. So, this is my alternator wire. It's already inside this wire loom. I'm also gonna put a, this plastic loom on top of that because I wanna make sure that it doesn't cause any kind of short. So we just keep going, work our way back, secure it as we go. We wanna make sure that it has no play, that it's gonna stay where we put it. it. Takes a while to figure out which way you wanna run them. I had it going on top of this and now i'm going under it. it takes a lot of time to just sort out the routing that you want to take so you're just going to have a whole lot of this kind of stuff where you put something up there figure out where it goes put a fastener to hold it just work your way around keep going this is for my electric fuel pump it goes across so the fuel pump wires actually go up to the glove box area where they tie into a relay so they go around up come back down and they'll get power right here so these are my transmission cooler lines. I put some plastic loom around them to give them a little protection from the edge of the frame, but I think I need something more substantial. That plastic's just gonna wear away. So when I have a point that I wanna bolt these to, I'll drill a hole, I'll go to the other side and put in a screw. Then on this side, I'll just put a, a regular nut and secure that down. So that'll give me a stud to clamp these two, and I'll put a self-locking nut on top of that. get this tightened down then that gives me a stud to put my clamps on so yeah i think i need something behind these a little bit more substantial just to keep them from chafing it leaves me a little room here for my exhaust that's got to come down i may end up having to move these all together but for now they're secured so this is a transmission harness this is a ground cable this wire goes across to the factory fuse block supplies power over there i believe that silver wire goes to the crank sensor which is right above the starter. It's really tight in there. Holly puts heat protection around it, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough. There's also a starter wire with that one. So I may have to put a little heat shield there or something. So far, I don't have my linkage hooked up to my transmission, but got some other stuff run. 
These are fuel lines. One's pressure, one's return. It's my O2 sensor. It's just tie wrapped up here, connects to the harness. So everything is run up here behind the glove box door. All my relays. The Terminator X is here. And it's actually just held in by Velcro. There's a big plate. So I had a big piece of Velcro. So this Velcro is gonna hold it in place. It's pretty light. Should help keep it from vibrating also. And that way, if I need to get it out, it's pretty easy to get out. There's also some LEDs on the top that I may have to look at. So I need it where I can pull that down and look at them. Whole bunch of grounds over there. There's just so much stuff to this. It's hard to make it look nice and neat. So you kind of have to do what you can and hide the rest. There's a lot going on. I don't know if I can make it much neater. It's just gonna have to be hidden. All these wires will get put into wire loom, pressed up out of the way. The engine harness is pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. You'll have your coils that'll plug into the engine harness, each side, right bank and left bank. Everything's labeled. Holly also gives you very good directions, tells you what, uh, what you may need, such as this one, since it's a boosted application. I had to get a different map sensor. This is the GM part number, but this is a fourth gen sensor. The harness is a third gen, so I had to get the adapter from a third gen to a fourth gen plug. Everything's labeled. This is ignition even, or the right bank plugs into the harness for your coil packs. The injectors, all the injectors are labeled, pretty simple. There are two ground straps that go to the back of each head. We've got them grounded on each side with a bolt. Way down on the back of the engine, that's gonna be your cam sensor and your oil pressure sensor. I had to change to a newer style, had a different plug, so I had to get a different oil pressure sensor with the correct plug. There's the starter, kind of up above the starter against the block. That's where your crank trigger is. Pretty hard to get to with a starter in, but it can be done. That silver wire goes to the crank trigger. It's got that heat shield on it. I think it may need more though. That's the alternator output that runs all the way back to the battery. This small wire, that goes to 12 volts positive. Run it around to join this other wiring harness that I've still got to secure. That's the front lighting wiring harness. I think I'm gonna put it along here. First it goes into the bulkhead. This is from the alternator. I've got it. still gotta hook that to 12 volts. I've got some extra wires that I'm not gonna use. So I'm gonna figure out which one is switch 12 volts and wire this into it. This goes to the rear lighting. We'll end up sticking this down in here, putting some wire loom on it. I'm probably not gonna use that steering column, but it's in there right now just for all the switches and electrical that's in it. This is the neutral safety switch that someone has wired together. I'm not sure how that's gonna come into play. Still haven't wired that up to the transmission. Gauge cluster, not gonna be using this because I have the Holly analog gauges that'll just plug into the Terminator X. This plug, I believe, is the lights. I'm gonna go here. This other stuff, still gotta sort out. I shouldn't need any of that to make this thing run. Got the vintage air control panel mounted. That's plugged up. So I got everything plugged into this steering column. I gotta make one more connection. That's gonna be the switch, the brake switch. I've gotta put that in. I've got all the wire run from the fans, everything I can, all the way to this point where I'm gonna pick up power. Now I'm gonna solder on the, the ends for the maxi fuse. maxi fuse block. It's another thing that takes so long is making all this stuff. Still a little warm. I 
All right, let's plug all this in. Let's see. All right, got to get some wire loom. Get that traced around. So with this battery, got top terminals, side terminals. I'm almost ready to hook that to the top. So I'll be using this side terminal here with this extension. And this is going to take care of two wires. And then this terminal will have these two wires on it that feed the fuse block in between. So that's one on the top, these two on the side, and two more. That should supply all the positive side battery connections. On the negative side, we've got this terminal up top, which is the main ground. This goes directly to the engine block. We'll do the same type of setup here on this side. We'll have a main ground that'll go to the, the body and it'll also go to the frame. Then I'll terminate these three and probably hook them to this terminal. So with my kick panel being open, I'm gonna to have to cap these off. Plan on making some covers to go over these, keep the water out, that way it'll stay out of the cab because it's open to inside the cab, down through the vent. So yeah, got a lot done, still a lot left to do. Still gotta do my exhaust from the turbo out. That's gonna be tricky, it's gonna take a little while to do that. I've got to get my drive shaft set up. I think the drive shaft I've got is going to work. I just got to get new joints to put them in. <sighs> but we're really close to turn that key and see if she'll start. Come back and see us next time, and hopefully we'll hear it go a uh, nudding. See y'all.